struck him out. Mariners are back in town here under the cover of the roof at Safeco Field with the Texas Rangers in town. We welcome you to Mariner Baseball. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew. Here we go. Let's take a look at the Rangers starting lineup that will go against Mike Leake. This is a ball club that will strike out a lot, but they'll also hit the ball out of the ballpark. They are second in the American League in home runs, and it starts with the Lionel DeShields. He is fourth in the American League in stolen bases with 28. Joey Gallo, 38 home runs on the year. That's third in the AL. And then Rugnet Odor he has 29 home runs in the eighth in the lineup. First pitch from Mike Leake. Ball one. James Hoy is a home plate umpire. Jeff Kellogg at first, Will Little at second, Tim Timmons at third. 2 0 to DeShields. 56 degrees, going to get down to about 51, maybe even 50. There's a strike, first one of the night from Mike Leake. Again, for Mike, his average fastball at 90 miles an hour, a cutter at 89. This is change up right around 84 miles an hour. Back up the middle base hit. I'll tell you, look at the defense for the Americans. See Heredia out in center field. Danny Valencia will get the start at first base. Alonzo getting the night off. And Mike Zanino will do the catching. For Mike Leake, looking for his fourth win. As a Mariner overall this year, a 10 and 12 record ERA at four, 172 and two thirds. He has 120 strikeouts over 37 walks. He will work fast, throw a lot of strikes, and you'll see a lot of ground ball outs from Mike Leake when he's on top of his game. Put the shift on for Shin Su Chu. Breaking ball misses. Mariners have done well against the Rangers, 11 and 5 in the season series here at home, 5 and 1. That's a big turnaround from last year when Texas won 12 of the 19 games and split five or split 10 games here in Seattle. Great throw over. Wants to keep the shields close. Again. He is fourth in the American League and stolen bases with 28. A lot of daring do out there. Here's the one up pitch here to Chew. Well, it's good to be back here, Mike. No question about it. After the heat in uh, Houston and especially losing those three games, so it's good to be back on familiar ground. And you know what? You never know in baseball. You just you never, never know. know. No, the guys are back home. They had yesterday off, which was nice for them. And as you mentioned earlier, I've really played well against the Rangers here in large part because they've swung the bats well against them. And they'll have to do that again in this series. It's got service. These guys are ready to go. Sanders waiting on deck. That would be great here for the Rangers. 2 1 pitch here. Mark the corner got a strike. There's the changeup. You mentioned it earlier. Typically, it throws changeup about 10% of the time, but against the Rangers in his last outing, he was right around 18%. Using the changeup a little bit more along with his cutter. It worked well for him in that outing. He went five and two thirds, just one earned run. Looking for his fourth win as a Mariner. All of them against the American League West. I mentioned he beat the Rangers, beat the Angels, and he's beat Oakland. What else you like about what you've seen from late to this point? I, I think again, it's great to have somebody that is a, a quality ground ball pitcher that plays anywhere. I like the fact that he works fast. You're going to see some good defense play behind him because of that. And just to have a veteran guy that can take the ball every fifth day, you have control of him for a few years. So, all pluses for me. Pretty good fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Did not get the call. Full count to Chew. We're talking about that durability, 30th start this season. Only pitcher to make 30 plus starts in each of his past six seasons, dating back to 2012. Then you look at Bumgarner, Hamels, Kennedy, Lester, Scherzer, Shields, and Volquez. This one set to left field. Coming on, Gamble. Coming on, makes a play. 
And the shield's caught up, and they should be able to double him up, and they will. If they would have had him either way, I didn't see him re-tag at second, but a fine play by Ben Gamble. Well done. Take a look at a big fish to see a big catch and get to it early in the game. I had to get a great break on it. The ball was dying in a hurry. And he was aware of the fact that the shield was running on the play, so he gets up as quickly as possible. Ball oh, really rolled around in that big glove of his. And then the throw back to first base. Again, the shield, it didn't look, appear that he retagged, but the throw beats him as Danny puts his foot on the base. I just mentioned it with Leak working fast. You're going to see some good defense behind him, and that's the start of it right there. Nice play by Gamble. Elvis Andrews having his best year in the big leagues. Elvis at 301, 20 homers, 85 runs batted in. Ninth in the league in hitting. Top foul. Take another look at the shields. Going towards second. Couldn't tell if he touched the base. He wasn't sure. He knows he has to re-tag, but by then it's too late, so he figures he's going to take a chance. But a hesitation paid off for the Mariners. Broken back here. Seeger tagged Valencia. Got him. Nice inning. Well done by the Mariners. When we come back, Gene Segura leads things off for Seattle. Martin Perez, the Mariners seen a lot of him over the years. Six and four, three, four, two a year in 16 games, 14 starts, one and two this year in four games. Here's a look at the lineup that he'll face tonight. And it starts with Gene Segura. Three for six with a home run against Perez. He will be in the leadoff spot. Nelson Cruz, he leads the American League with 110 RBIs. And Guillermo Heredia hitting 320 versus left-handers this year. He will hit eighth in the lineup. For Perez, this will be his 30th start. 482 ERA, 168 innings, 107 strikeouts, over 56 walks. Again, his average fastball, 93 miles an hour. Fastball changeup primarily. It does have a curve and a slider, but mostly fastball at 93 and a changeup. First pitch to Segura. Off the plate, ball one. Gene, 10th leading hitter in the American League starting tonight. Mariners looking to end a three game losing streak. They're back from a three and four road trip. with 19 home runs against the Rangers this season like to keep that up. Two and one here to Gene. He's three for six on homer and two runs batted in. Against Perez two one. Got a pitch in on his fist Andrews throws him out. 
And a look at the defense for the Rangers. No more Mazzara in left field, typically a right field, a strong throwing arm, so you have to be aware of that. Drew Robinson will get to start at third base. Again, Beltre, the DA tonight. So Robinson will get to start at third, and Robinson Chirinos will do the catching. Here's Mitch Hanniger coming off a one for four performance a couple of days ago. Good road trip for Mitch. Ten hits, 31 at bats, two homers, three runs batted in. This is the fifth time the Mariners will face Perez. Haniger three for nine against him. Perez is going to try to keep the ball on the ground, a lot like Mike Lee. Both of them work quickly. We saw a lot of that from the Mariners against Perez last time. A lot of foul balls. They threw a lot yeah. of pitches to get through five and a third. 105 pitches. I'd like to see that happen again. 106, excuse me, 106 pitches. Ball and two strikes here to Hanniger. One out here in the first. Two and two. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. Four back, 12 to play. Robbie Cano on deck. 2 2. Goes the other way for a base hit. And Mitch Hanniger, first hit of this homestand for the Mariners. It's been hot lately, 93 miles an hour. Middle away from him, and he just goes the other way with a couple of strikes. Good hitting from Hanniger. Keeps going up for Mitch. Finishing strong. Got off to the hot start before he got injured. Robbie Cano goes for his pre-game. His pre-first at bat ritual. 299 career home runs. 13th among active players. Tied for 146th all-time with Tim Salmon. Been sitting on 299 for a while. When he gets a 300, he will tie Chuck Klein, the Hall of Famer. Rogers Hornsby and Ryan Braun in his sights as well. Hornsby at 301, Braun at 302. And counting tonight, 12 games for the Mariners. Robbie right at 90 RBIs, so 10 more RBIs for him to get to 100. It's a milestone for any player. If he's able to get there, that means he's been hot the last 12 games, and that would be a good sign for the Mariners. Six for 28, the Cano numbers against Perez. And fielded double play depth for the Rangers. Slow breaking ball. Fielded nicely by Gallo, and no return throw. So they get the lead runner. Cano aboard, fielder's choice. Yankees playing Minnesota. And that is a very big series. Right now, the Yankees get a root for the Yankees. 4 2 lead over Minnesota. Blue Jays knock off the Royals, and the Indians and the Angels just getting underway. Nelson Cruz hitting 368 with three home runs against Perez. Found that off the end of the bat. Nelly with 317 career home runs, tied for eighth among active players with Curtis Granderson. Leads the league in RBIs. At 110, five ahead of Baltimore's Jonathan Scope. Nelly had eight hits on the road trip. Drove in three, hit one home run. Ah! Takes strike one and two. Oh, well, the American League, you got Cleveland is clinched, Houston is clinched. 
Dodgers and Washington have clinched over in the National League right now trying to teams division leaders battling for the top spot in their league as Nelly swings through Mariners strand a runner to the second inning we go here in Seattle no score. by Honda. Hurry in to the Honda Summerbration Sales Event today by Amtrak Cascades. What a beautiful way to travel. Visit AmtrakCascades.com. And by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mariners back home here. Final six home games of the regular season. And off to Oakland and Anaheim to finish out. 2017 campaign. There's future Hall of Famer Adrian Beltre to lead it off, DHing. Strike one to Adrian, who's one for eight against Leak. Just some time was activated when we were in Texas last week. He's missed a lot of time, but still hitting 310. 16 home runs in the 85 games that he has played. Major left hamstring strain happened down late August in Tropicana Field, way outside. Link got a big double play in the first inning to get out of a little bit of trouble. It's three and one here to Beltre. Beltre, 31st player. Big league history to reach 3,000 hits. Ah! You mentioned the double play. That's not unusual with Mike on the mound. Again, very good ground ball pitcher, but fly ball out in the left field. Great play by Gamble. Get the double play. Here's a 3 2 to Beltre. Fouled it off. He almost hit himself in the face. He may have hit himself flipping his back. Almost hit himself it. in the face with the foul ball and then the bat. Sheesh. There's the ball. He got the Off leg. Knee, yeah. That hurt and he flips and he <laughs> just knocked himself out for crying out loud. Be careful that way. 3 2 pitch. It's a base hit. So Adrian will add oh, the batting average of 310. That was a pretty good catch. That's a real good catch. <laughs> Felix laughing at him. Wow. <laughs> There's no more Mazzara. They're going to have Valencia play behind them. The state mentioned hamstring issue this year, so they don't expect him to run over at first base. 
That hit from Beltre, 3,039. Strike one to Mazzara. Good slow curveball. Well struck. Deep left. One hop, couple of hops off the fence. Beltre laboring. He's going to get the third. Throw to second. A little bit offline. Beltre dancing around and Segura daring him to move. <laughs> to cause that. Yeah, go ahead and run. He got a bad hand. We read the scouting report. We saw it last week. Now we'll take a look at it. Fastball, 88 miles an hour in the middle of the plate. Strong throw by Hanniger in right field to make it a play at second base. I think it surprised Mazar. Second and third here for Joey Gallo. Dangerous hitter. Third in the league in home runs with 38. Fourth in strikeouts. He, he hit a ball yesterday. Watch this. I mean, you want to talk about lift and separate. Way up on the batter's eye. Yeah. They called it 490 feet. Well, 38 home runs this year. Third in the American League in home runs. From seeing that for about the fourth time, I'm all in at 490. <laughs> yeah. Saw the 211 batting ever, so he will strike out quite a bit. Fourth in the league, 176 Ks. One of the really terrific low ball hitters we have in the game. I mean, a lot of the home runs we've seen have been right down in that lefty loop zone. And there's a lot of leverage in his swing. Yeah. Two one. So pick up a run here, Segura. Whoa, we thought about coming home to get Beltre, knowing he's not at 100 percent. Beltre gives him a double look as he scores one nothing Rangers. RBI ground out for Joey Gallo, his 76th run batted in. Then you take a look at it. The shift. Segura thinking about it. Maybe later in the game, he probably would have gone home, but early in the game, take the out. You see Adrian still limping. Moving to third is Mazzara. First pitch to Robinson Chirinos, the catcher off the plate. Infield about halfway. Let's look at the defense. Outfield straight up. Cano will hold the runner. Throw out Chirinos, two down. Two down to bring up Ruth Neto Door, the most popular way. To follow the Mariners postseason push is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, stat cast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. So here's Ruth Neto Door. He's all about getting it out of the yard, hitting just 208, but he's got 29 home runs. And he feasts on fastballs. Rangers hitting 252, runners in scoring position. They've knocked out 28 home runs. You see Jeff Bannister on the left, and Steve Bouchelle is bench coach. And that hit a line there there right to Denny. And that'll retire this side. A run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. When we come back, Kyle Seeger gets his first eight B against Martin Perez.
a hot dog and a, a pretzel and a hot dog. Nice night at the ballpark for them. We take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Mattress Firm. Two more games with the Rangers, then the high flying Cleveland Indians, best record in the American League. They come to town. Then the Mariners finish up on the road at the A's and at the Angels. There's Kyle Seeger. He has spent his career tormenting Texas Ranger pitching. Kyle coming off an 0 for 4. He's got four home runs among the 16 hits he has against Perez. Another part of it with Kyle, it's an adjustment that he made a number of years ago, but since 2012, left on left, left handed pitcher, left handed hitter, nobody's hit more home runs off of lefties than Kyle Seeger. 52 home runs for Kyle. That is super impressive. Also, has a 316 career batting average against the Rangers in 120 games. Two and two. Talking about the success the Mariners had last week down in Arlington. The fact that they're 11 and 5 against the Rangers. Their 277 batting average against the Rangers is the best among or against division opponents. Thank goodness for the shift. <laughs> Talking about wild card spoiler, I'll tell you what, Cleveland Indians, they got a chance to impact it in a large, large way. Look at that, three with the Angels, three with the Mariners, and three with the Twins. Indians. Nobody's been today. hotter than them. Oh, crazy. 93 and 57. They, they ran down the Houston Astros. They have a slight lead against them for the overall record, best record in the American League. A couple wins ahead of them. Cleveland with 93 wins. Houston now with 91. Edgar Martinez, tip, always a tip of the cap to the batting coach. He and Scott Brocious hiding behind Martin Perez. Boys really knocked the ball around the yard down in, in Arlington. 2 2 fouled off. He's really trying to pitch Kyle inside. That's fastball probably just in off the plate. But too close to take. Torino's going back in there again. I went even further inside. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Battle. Pretty good fastball right there at 94. Door the second baseman, you see him out there in short right field. 2 2. Swing and a miss. Got him back to back strikeouts for Perez. One away. Throw all those fastballs inside. He comes back with a breaking ball. Pitch two on the outside corner at the knees. So Perez now will battle Danny Valencia. He's got a homer. Amongst the eight hits he has career against Perez. Swing and a miss. Start him off with the changeup. 320 against him with that home run. And he just two freight on the road trip. They're seeing a whole bunch of right handers. Lonzo getting a lot of the play. Dennis Pitt had a couple pitch hit opportunities. 1 1. Lefties with Perez and Tankle, I believe. Because Hamill, too, right? And Hamill's and three. Yeah. Yeah. Two and one to Valencia. Three and one. RBI ground up by Joey Gallo, top half of this inning. The difference right now is Mike Zanino. Awaits his turn. It's 
three balls and two strikes. See Danny asking the home plate umpire if that last pitch was off the plate. I believe it was right on the corner. Danny Valencia works a one out walk. That's the reason why he asked about it. I don't know how far he was going to be able to go, and that was just a little bit further away. First walk in the ball game. Sometimes a hitter will ask the umpire, and they have a pretty good idea of where that pitch was at, but they just want to know how far he's going to go. You need that either, confirmation, right? Yep, either on the outside or the inside, because when you get to two strikes, you want to know, and you want the umpire to know that you're aware of what he's calling also. That's the point I like. Yeah. Dude, tracking all the way, I know my strike zone. Do you? And, and well, don't forget, you just told me what it yeah, was. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Did everything but getting the sign a document. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but that's why you do it. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> strike one is an Eno. Been a hot hitter since the All-Star break, hitting 280 with 11 home runs. Three hits against Perez, two homers. Infield at double play depth. Here's a one-one. Tip into the glove of Chirinos. Saw that with the Rangers when they were dealing with Mike trying to throw the fastball at the top of the strike zone. He missed a couple of times and Mike with a few home runs down in Arlington. A couple of them. Ball two strikes. Valencia at first. One out. Strike three call. Two down. Again, another fastball, 94 miles an hour, right at the top of the strike zone. It'll bring up Guillermo Heredia. Pretty solid in the field yeah. uh, on a road trip, but just three for 22 at the plate. Uh, you'd hope he'd get things turned around tonight. He's done a nice job against left handers this year, hitting 320 against lefties. Mr. Shields over to his right. Inning over. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We go to the third, a 1 0 Texas lead. Face, what a cutie! All right, there's <laughs> stuff in the ball game. Good stuff. School is back. It's back in session, and that means so is college night here at Safeco Field. Join us Thursday when students can score $13 tickets. 
Plus, enjoy extended happy hour, including $6 beers and discounted pizza. Go to Mariners.com slash college for your tickets. Mike Lee can face the bottom of the order. Here's Drew Robinson, third baseman. Be followed by Delano DeShields and Shin Su Chu, 9-1 and 2. Joey Gallo, RBI ground out to short, scored Adrian Beltre for the one run. The other way down the line, getting fouled. Robinson at 208, four homers and 10 runs batted in just his 37th game. Foul off of Zanino. <laughs> Mike, as he always does, just shook it off like it never happened. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> that helmet took like a pounding there. My goodness. Thank goodness. Again, thank you, Johnny Bench, for starting that trend. Can't say it yeah, enough. It's one of those things with Mike, too. So many times you see the hitter or the umpire trying to give him a little bit more time. Good pitch right on the inside corner at 89 miles an hour. Good fastball for Mike. But Mike Zanino he never needs any extra time back there. The guys are, you know, they it doesn't give matter. The, can square him up in the middle of his mask. And they they want to give fight. him the courtesy. Do shake it off. Give you a couple of seconds. I'm good. He wants Here to keep go. the game going. And this is the reason why. Painted the inside corner with a good fastball. First strikeout for Leach. Top of the order and DeShield single to center on the 2 1 pitch to open up the ball game. Shows Bunt takes a strike. Mike Leach, unlike most pitchers who wear Double digit numbers as number eight when he went to Arizona State, he wanted 10. One of the coaches, I'm not giving it up. <laughs> so he says, All right, I'll be different. And he took number eight, been with him all along. And Marcus Stroman wears six, Mike Snell wears four, Julio Iria. With the Dodgers were seven. You don't have a lot of guys. Matt Belisle with the Twins were nine. Clayton Richard with the Padres was three. Two and two. One out. Really starting to mix in his cut fastball with the two seamer. Top of the seventh, Yankees 5 2 over the Twins. Yankee Stadium 2 2. Breaking ball set to almost right center field for Heredia. So 2 down. Time now for today's T Mobile Unlimited Baseball break. Major League home runs this season before today. Look at that 56 77, 26 hit today. Look at that total. The wet record breaker by Alex Gordon made it 56 94. I gotta believe this. I wonder where the home. Uh, let's try that again. I wonder where the strikeout numbers are. Our comparison in terms of you know all time in the list. And it probably will set a record there. I, I mean, think given, they will set a record there. I mean, given away everybody's you know all or nothing. Not everybody, but the majority of guys are all or nothing swingers. Ratio per plate appearance is worse than last year. The record was set. Here's ground ball. Segura gets a nice friendly hop. Good inning for Mike Leak. Strikeout looking, fly out, and an easy ground out. When we come back, Ben Gamble homered a couple of days ago. He's going to lead it off, followed by Gene Segura and Mitch Hanniger.
one nothing for the Rangers. Hey, the Orchid card is all you need to ride the Sounder train, Link Light Rail, buses, ferries, and streetcars. Learn more at GetOrchisMart.com. One nothing Texas Rangers. It's must win time for the Mariners. Back four games, 12 to play in a wild card chase. The ben Gamel fan, nice artwork. Ben hitting it 278 with 10 homers, 54 runs batted in. Homer, third inning. And Sunday, 7 1 loss at Houston. Cut. One and one to count the Ben. Just one for eight against Perez. Perez so far, three strikeouts, one walk. No runs on one hit, base hit by Hanniger. Ben has done a nice job against left handers this year, hitting 282 overall. Actually, hitting left handers better than right handers. Swing and a miss. Sweeping breaking ball. Speaking of strikeouts, time now for a Geico of this date in MLB history. Take it back to 1929. Joel Sewell sets an MLB record playing in his 115th straight game without wow. striking out. Are you kidding? He'd strike out four times all season in 578 ABs. Also on this date, 1968, one of your favorite players was batting against Denny McLean and was looking to break the tie with Jimmy Fox the Mick and Jim Price good buddy does yeah. color <laughs> for the Tigers was catching his hey, Mick he's gonna let you get one and first couple pitches came in and he didn't believe him and the third pitch here it comes boom and he hit it out on this day 1968 and the thing that tickled me when I heard about this <laughs> you know what the time of game was on that game 1968 is not that long ago I was 207 like 201. <laughs> Two oh one for a time of game. Now that <laughs> making us all hold. <laughs> Ball of two strikes to Segura. Grounded out to short. And Elvis Andrews. Throw him out again. So two down. I'll bring him Mitch Hanniger. He has the Mariners only hit. Base hit to right. A two two pitch in the first. Jumped on Perez last week. Came in having won seven consecutive games. They beat him last week. Tonight he comes in with three consecutive road wins. Sandiger is ahead, one and zero. Oh. I definitely do not remember him. We've seen seen Perez a lot. Remember him working this quickly, like we saw last week, and like we see tonight. Well, the other thing too is he's using his fastball a lot. He's actually. His velocity, you mentioned the last eight games, he pitched well, but he's taking a little bit off of his fastball. Off the end of the bat. Yep. There's a changeup. Odor for the play. Five in a row retired by Perez. Elvis Andrews to lead it off.
Mariners back home for the final week of the season of the regular season at home. Make sure you join us for Fan Appreciation Night. It's presented by Emirates Airline and Holland America Line. It's coming up this Friday at 710. Enjoy great prize giveaways, including TVs, autographed jerseys, and more. Plus, a spectacular post-game fireworks show courtesy of T-Mobile. Tickets at Mariners.com. Mike Leak face the middle of the order here. Andrews, Beltre, Mazzara. There's a scoring semi. Leadoff single by Beltre in the second. Double third by Mazzara. An RBI grab out for Joey Gallo. Elvis grounded out to Seeger first time up. Take Kyle one down. And a quick out for Mike, who's working quickly. Both pitchers, pretty good pace tonight. And both of them throwing a lot of strikes. Well, that's a big element right there. Not only are you working quickly, but spiking it up by being in the zone. One of the things that we've talked about for Mike so far 12 batters face nine first pitch strikes and you show the opposing team that you're going to be around the strike zone. They'll start to be more aggressive and for Mike I think that plays into what he's trying to do. Start working on the edges of the plate cutter away from the right hands two seamer in on their hand mix in a change up. Ground ball to Segura. Next time he knows Beltre limping. Because they're quality pitches for Mike, you're going to see the ball on the ground quite a bit. Mike 3 0 with the Mariners, 2 4 1 ERA and three starts overall. And this time with the Cardinals this year, 7 and 12, a 4 2 1 ERA. The key to that, too, is you mentioned quality strikes, but with the cutter and the two seamer that he throws as a hitter, that late movement and not sure which direction it's going to go in. A lot of times you see it off the end of the bat or even jam them. Tough to square them up. Azura did last time up, doubling into the right field corner. I think that was a fastball in the middle of the plate. A few mistakes that he has made so far. Mike ahead on two. Fielders all tilted right here for Mazzara. Veteran move by Mazzara. Mike was ready to go as soon as Mike saw both feet in there. Here's, hey, let's do this. Call two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Way upstairs. Felix Hernandez goes tomorrow. Paxton on Thursday. Felix hoping to get up around 70, 80 pitches. Paxton hopefully has got his mechanics back in order so he can get deep into a game. Three, two. Segura out on the grass. Throws him out. Eight pitches for Mike Leak, the model of efficiency. Cano Cruz and Seeger coming up. <laughs> the Coors Brothers jersey. You're going to love it.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. He wants some runs like everybody else watching. <laughs> Cano Cruz Seeger. Hopefully that's a good formula. Sounds like some runs. Probably reached on a fielder's choice first inning. And that Perez was able to get him to reach for a breaking ball away from him. And a ground ball to Gallo. And up getting the lead runner at second. Mariners have really turned it around from last year against these Rangers. They were 7 and 12 against them this year, 11 and 5, 5 and 1 here in Seattle. Only two strikes here to Robin. Outside. That was going a while since his last home run. 17 days was against Oakland. Sitting on 299 for his career. 2 2 pitch. Solidly struck. Left field. Leadoff single for Robinson Cano here in the fourth. Well, he's certainly aware of the milestone and what 300 will mean to him in his career. I don't think he's really chasing it because we've seen a lot of this inside out swing the other way again. The batting average continues to go up for Robbie. Been hot lately now with 90 RBIs for him. No chance to get to 100, but a solid base hit into left field. Brings up the American League RBI leader Nelson Cruz, struck out on a 1 2 pitch first time. Perez worked him away, fastball change up in his first at bat. Ball one. Roof's been covering us all day. Wind not a factor. Flags hanging straight down. One one to Nelly. Pitch right here, two and one. Great center field, a lot of carry on the track is the shields. He makes the play right in front of the root sports side. Quite enough. Well, cool evening. And this is right off the outside corner. Probably catches it off the end of the bat. Wasn't quite sure if he had enough of it. You take a look at the swing. Not much of a stride at all. It's a little bit of a toe tap for him. And the shields will catch it right up against the fence. One out, one on for Kyle Seeger. Struck out in a long at bat. Struck out swinging second strikeout victim for Perez who's got four on the night with one walk took nine pitches to strike him out and he pitched him inside early and then finally put him away with a breaking ball the breaking ball right away in this at bat. Kyle. Doesn't look like he wants to give him any kind of quality fastballs. He's throwing them, he's throwing them in off the plate. Kyle hoping he makes a mistake with the fastball, but that has not happened yet. Starts him off with a couple of breaking balls here in this at bat. Three in a row. 
Did not as it asked for help from Tim Timmons. Mentioned earlier, Kyle with more home runs left on left since 2012 with 52 of them. And I asked Kyle about it. And he said he made one change and basically as he opened up his stance a little bit, and you can see it. That right foot a little bit open, left foot a little bit closer to the plate. And they're going to go back inside here, probably in off the plate. He's waiting for it. Gallo touch and they'll get a tag here at Cano. Get him in a rundown. They don't want to aggravate his leg. And there's a double play. Hit it hard. Just didn't work out. One nothing Rangers. Baseball on Root Sports being brought to you by Primera Blue Cross, always in your corner. By Safeco Insurance, find a local agent at Safeco.com. Do more. And by your local Toyota dealers. For all Toyota offers, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The dangerous Joey Gallo going to lead it off as we come to you above the A in Safeco Field. Gallo, Chirinos, and Odor against Mike Leake. Room service ground ball. Robbie Cano one down. And we mentioned that last inning because Mike is throwing a lot of strikes. See the Rangers being a little more aggressive with him early in counts. Another ground ball out. 15 batters faced. 12 first pitch strikes. Tired the last 10 men he's faced. Not much offense so far for either team. The Rangers one run on three hits. See the Mariners have not scored only two hits for them. Catcher Robinson Chirinos grounded out to Cano. Pounded in those first pitch strikes. Rangers come in after a win on Sunday 4 2 that ended a five game losing streak. Streak began with the three losses to the Mariners. And ball goes foul. Well, here's another night that shows you the crazy <laughs> nature of baseball. Not that beautiful family there, but the fact that the Phillies beat the Dodgers for the second night in a row. Dodgers with the best record in baseball. Last night, Aaron Altair hit a grand, uh, grand slam upper deck in Philly to beat him. Playable. Valencia for out number two. 
check out the wild card scores. Good news all around indeed. 5-2 Yankees. Blue Jays beat the Royals. Indians lead the Angels. And now the Mariners have to take care of their business. Mike Leak up holding his in, retiring the last 11 men that he's faced. Big series for the Mariners. They played well against the Rangers. Again, 11 and 5 on the year. It's Texas. There's a door. Strike one. Lined out to Valencia. First time up. Backing up towards a 401. Heredia. No, can't get it. Bounces off and over the fence. Right at him. Well, he is a power pack guy, Rudnet Odor. That's his 20th double. He's got 29 home runs and three triples. Ball really jumps off of his bat. And that's what happens right here. It's rare for Heredia in center field to be full, but I think this ball was hit harder than he thought. It bounces off the track line drive right at him over the top of his head. Always the worst one. Right? Yeah that's the toughest one to read. Can't get an angle on it. Here's Drew Robinson the third baseman took a cold third strike. Brown ball fielded by Hector Ortiz the first base coach Tony Beasley coaching at third. Rangers are hitting 252 on the year with runners in scoring position 0 for 3 so far tonight. Look out. Cut fastball in on his hands breaks his bat. Quickly ahead 0 2. In that Philly 6 2 win, we were talking about a four run seventh did it for the Phillies to beat the Dodgers. So 0 and 2 here to Drew Robinson. Young man born and raised, still lives in Las Vegas. Fourth round pick in the 2010 draft. A run on four hits for the Rangers. No runs, two hits for the Mariners. Lake went five and two thirds, five hits, a run, a walk, five Ks last Wednesday, and beating these Rangers down to Texas. Two and two. First season in the big leagues for Robinson's knocked around the Ranger system since 2010. Two two pitch, two out, runner at second. Ready at the center fielder shading towards left center expecting the ball the other way playing more to pull on the infield. Segura playing up the middle trying to keep Odor close to the bag at second. And Zanino another conversation. Second time that he's gone out there. Still getting to know each other. Well, Cleveland can put itself in good shape with that Dodger loss. A Cleveland win tonight will put them just two and a half games behind the Dodgers for the best record in, in all of baseball. 2 2 pitch here. Swing and a miss, County. Big strikeout with a man at second. Odor stranded out there. Mariners need some runs. They're down 1 0. Danny Valencia will lead it off, followed by Mike Zanino and Guillermo Heredia.
Manson here. Neil Pert with a P. <laughs> Dancing to a song by Rush, and he is into it. <laughs> Having a good time. Yes, he is. I think he's going to be a drummer. <laughs> Danny Valencia leads things off. Walked in his first plate appearance on a 3 2 pitch. That was in the second. Mariners couldn't move him alone. Followed by Zanino and Heredia. And the Mariners faced Perez in Arlington, and they were able to get his pitch count up. And five and a third, he threw 106 pitches. In good shape today, just 62 pitches here in the ball game. Twenty-eighth of August, last time Danny went deep. It was in Baltimore. Well, he has a good count right here, three and one. Count. Three and two to Valencia. Eight hits, career against Perez, one home run. Couple of hops to Andrews, steps into the throw, and there's one away. Just thinking you are okay to drive, you know what? It's not enough. If there is a question, don't get behind the wheel. Remember, drug, drugs are high. It's a DUI. Here's Mike Zanino. Took a cold third strike his first time. Strike one. Perez has had a good fastball tonight. He's topped out at 95 miles an hour. Mixing his changeup from time to time. Basically staying on both sides of the plate with Michael trying to elevate the fastball first time up. And there's one at the top of the strike zone. 0 and 2. Won it again. Missed outside. I can't remember which one it was, but I know one of his home runs this year was a pitch up in that upper range of a fastball. He's, yeah, he, he's hit a couple of them, and and there's been a number of them that haven't been quite at that top line of the strike zone, maybe down just a little bit, and he's done some damage with that. So if you're going to try him up there, you just miss that one. That fastball again, not quite at the top of the strike zone. And he just missed it. You can see how long it was in the air. He does have. The greatest hang time yeah. on pop ups, yeah, no bar question. none on this ball club tour. <laughs> Take a look at some matchups for the next two days. CenturyLink bringing it to you. Hopefully, Felix can give uh, 70 to 80 quality pitches tomorrow. And then James Paxton, you had some conversation with yep. him. What's his? His focus uh, going into this next start. Well, you mentioned it earlier. He was having some mechanical issues in his first start back. He's, of course, he said he was going to probably be around the same as Felix, around 75 pitches. Um, but mechanically, it was more where he was landing. He said his lower half was flying open, so he was flying open with his shoulder. And that's why his velocity was down, had a tough time commanding the fastball. So he worked on a few things, and he says he has it all worked out. He's excited about the start, so. Hopefully early on we see that fastball in that 95 96 Ooh. mile an hour range. That's usually a pretty good sign. Line drive into the stands new bat for Guillermo last time out for Paxton. 
Last Friday, 5 2 loss to the Astros. He went an inning and a third, four hits, three runs, three earned runs, two walks, no K's, and 50 pitches. And we're saying on his stride, his front foot, his right foot as he was landing, he just kept gliding open with it. And he said that he's done some things out in the bullpen, and one of them he was actually going through his motion and pitching up the slope of the mound as opposed to down the slope because it was shortening up his stride which was keeping his front shoulder in shape and then he said when he would get up on the mound it, it fixed it immediately and I asked him I said do you do that all the time and he said no probably he said probably should do it more than he does but typically when he has that issue that's how he fixes it and he, he's ready to go laid off the breaking ball two and two two out nobody on fifth inning one nothing on the second inning Joey Gallo RBI ground out Mike Leakes held Texas to run on four hits Perez no runs two hits for the Mariners there's base hit third of the night for the Mariners and Guillermo's eighth hit career against Perez two out base runner sets it up for Ben Gamble this Sunday Sound Transit celebrating the one year anniversary of the opening of the Angle Lake light rail station make sure you're on hand for live music food vendors plus a visit to the Mariner Moose from 10 to 10 30 then ride the light rail to the 110 game against the Indians that'll be the home finale. And has had his struggles against Perez. He's now one for nine. They give him a big gap in right center. All one. has a pretty good feel for his breaking ball to the left handers in the lineup. Campbell ended up striking out on the breaking ball away. He starts him off away with the breaking ball here. Robbie has seen the same pitch. So is Kyle Seager the other left handed hitters in the lineup. Already a one for six been a while since he's taken off. There's a gap shot we're hoping for. Watch Guillermo run. He's going to score. We're going to tie ball game. He is flying. So is Ben. Ben will hold there with an RBI double. We got a 1 1 ball game. Well, he was able to put it in that gap because I looked up when he got to the plate. You could see it. It was like a chasm out there. Takes advantage of it. Gamble with his 55th run batted in his 23rd double. And the Mariners probably had the right guy at first base again trying to go away with the breaking ball. That one more in the middle of the plate and he lines it in the right center field. Talked about it earlier. He's really done a pretty good job this year hitting left handers hitting 282 overall and you can see nobody close to the baseball. It sits on the warning track. Heredia scores easily. And maybe most of the time we've seen Benny probably would have tried to go for a triple but with a couple of outs and a runner trying to score decided to stay at second base. He's already in scoring position now. If Segura can give the Mariners the lead. Gene two ground outs to Elvis Andrews at shortstop. Oh man that went off the catcher. And hear that nice. James Hoy to grab Chirinos and. Hopefully he can walk this thing off quickly. Easier said than done. Take a look at it. Foul ball straight back. Hey, yeah. yay, yay. I'd rather not, Mr. Tyson, bet you do that again. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Some important games going on. The Yankees ahead of the Twins. Blue Jays already beat the Royals and the Indians on top of the Angels. So important games, everything going the Mariners' way so far. Tied it up. Both teams are run on four hits. Segura trying to bring Gamble home. Put the Mariners in front. 0-1. Oh, 
first time that the Mariners have had in that bat with a runner in scoring position tonight. Nice job overall this year. 274 as a team with runners in scoring position. Much improved average for him. One of the best numbers in the 11 years we've been doing this. Yeah. Really is. I mean, that's way up there. Segura 252 with the runners in scoring position. Looking for a big two out knock and an RBI. Towards the line, Chu in fair territory. That'll do it. But the good news, Ben Gamble gaps one right center, ties the game at 1 1. In fact, how about this guy since he came over from the St. Louis Cardinals? Mike Leak has done an outstanding job looking to take his Mariners record to 4 and 0 oh tonight. And oh, yeah, he'll be back next season, too. Terrific deal by Jerry DePoto. How about a little hashtag where I root presented by Alaska Airlines? And remember, when you send these in, you are giving us permission to use them on the air. Dave, good enough to send this in. He is at Disney California Adventure with Donna. Hope you two are having a great time. And Ross Dunn, Ross, thanks for all the terrific work on the Norse Peak Fire. Finally getting a break with the weather over there, guys. Those firefighters do a remarkable job. Up to Dave and Mike. Yes, they do, Tom. Thanks so much. Good to have you with us, Tom. As the Rangers, top of the order, Delano DeShield, Shin Su Chu, and Elvis Andrews. Ernest have tied it up. 1-1. One, one. Shields tonight, single to center, fly to center. Always want to keep his speed off of the bases. Fourth in the American League in stolen bases with 28. Big sweeping breaking ball, strikeout for Mike Leake. His third, one away here to sixth. Yeah, and here's a look at it. Pretty good breaking ball. Spanning the strike zone, getting into chase. Will also happen when you throw a lot of strikes. And again, Mike has done that tonight. 19 batters, 16 first pitch strikes. Strike one to Chew. Campbell made a nice diving stop on him as Zanino got hit again. Diving grab in the first, and then he grounded out to Segura his second time up. Tell you 
what his misses are really close. And some of those misses are by design trying to expand the strike zone. Get some weak ground balls. Chu didn't like that last call, but that was a pretty good pitch right at the bottom of the strike zone. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. A weak swing at that. Back to back K's. For Mike Leak. That's three consecutive strikeouts and gives him four in the ball game. Starting to mix in his breaking ball a little bit more. Third time through the lineup. It's Chu to swing right over the top of it, looking for the fastball. He's a leading hitter for the Rangers, Elvis Andrews. Ground out to Seeger and a line out to Seeger. Seamer probably in off the plate. Jammed him a little bit with it. It's a pretty good job of the fastball. It's 89, 90 miles an hour. He breaks a lot of bats. Because yeah. it's getting in right above the hands, right yeah. below the label. And again, it, to the right-handers, he'll throw that cutter away, so they start looking away for the cutter, and then he throws a two-seamer to run it back. So they're expecting it to move away from him, and really it's moving in on their hands. The 0-2. The two-seamer. Seeger. Safe. It'll be an infield hit. Hit a little bit harder. Kyle would have thrown him out or retired Elvis for the third consecutive time. With a couple outs, Kyle was playing back. Andrews also with 20 home runs on the year, and Kyle gets rid of it quickly. Good play by Danny Valencia at first. Decided at the last second to come off the bag. Keep the ball from going down the right field line. Ooh, wonder if he heard that that left foot or left leg. That was a long extension with a heavy land. Yeah, he's, he's limping around a little bit. Looks like he's going to walk it off. Steve Bouchelle, the bench coach there, his son Shane, quarterback for the University of Texas, injured. A heck of a game that was the other day, USC Texas. Steve Hope and Shane to get back to the starting lineup. There's Beltre. Picked up career. Hit number 3039. Base hit the center in the second inning. Grounded out to short in the fourth. Time called. Two outs, runner at first, Andrews decent speed. And he shoots one through the hole. Andrews, the ball took a weird hop out there, and he eases over to third. So a couple of weak base hits with two outs. Mike in a little bit of trouble here. Rangers are 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position, and Mel Stottlemyre Jr. making a trip out to the mound. As you take a look at it, right off the end of the bat, Cano playing up the middle, not able to get to it. You see it bounce in the air off the lip of the grass. Mike in great shape with his pitch count. Now at 80 pitches, 55 strikes for him. Nobody getting loose in the pen. Adrian Beltre, 3,040 hits. He's 26th all time. Next on his hit parade is Rod Carew. At 33,053, 3053. There's no more Mazzara. Double into the right field corner. Grounded out to Segura. Link stranded a runner in the first, a runner in the second, and a runner in the fifth. Trying to strand two now. 
Well, two out hits by the three and four hole hitting hitters for the Rangers. That is a foul ball. Important out here for Mike Leak. Mariners tied it in the fifth. Two out RBI double. Ben Gamble scored Heredia from first. Danny with a nice what backhand. A Takes it to the bag. Mike Leak strands two in the sixth. Valencia with a strong defensive play to keep it a 1 1 ball game. Mitch Hanniger will lead it off when we get back. For the sixth inning, the bottom of the sixth inning, and some good news as we check out other happenings with wild card possibilities here. The Twins lose for the second night at the Yankees 5 2. Earlier, Blue Jays took out the Royals 5 2, and the Indians lead in the fifth 2 0. And here's how it looks in the standings. Mariners got a chance, they can make a move here on the Angels and pick up ground on the Twins too if they can win this game here tonight. And that's a critical time for them to do it after tonight. Just 11 games remaining for the Mariners. So this is an opportunity they cannot let pass by. Part of the lineup here to score a couple of runs. Hanniger with a base hit his first time up one for two. And line drive into right field. He's and ahead here. 2-0. Oh. Hanniger, Cano and Cruz. And Perez now at 84 pitches. He's been sharp tonight. You see Barnett, the hard throwing right hander, getting loose in the pen. Make a few mistakes for the Mariners. There's a good fastball at the top of the zone. It's been a good pitch for him tonight. The elevated fastball. Two one pitch. In tight. Not sure why, but. With Perez, and we've seen him a bunch, especially this year's fifth start. But I was thinking of him as a changeup, kind of a curveball, decent fastball, but he has a good fastball. He has topped out at 95 miles an hour. His average fastball this year is 93. Did he get enough? Right. Get back in. It's caught on the track by Mazzara. One out. Second time that's happened tonight. Nelson Cruz earlier. Yep. Flew out to center field up against the fence. Take a look at it. Put down on time. Just missed it. Skied it out to left field. Put another grain on it towards the center of that bat. It's back in the bullpen. Just missed it. 
I think for Perez because he mixes it up so well. He'll use his changeup. He will use his curveball to go with the good fastball. Without a doubt, the best fastball fastball we've seen from him. Cano bounces it foul. The other part too, we mentioned he's really pitched well over his last eight starts. One of the things that I've noticed from him is not just working both sides of the plate, but that elevated fastball. Now he's starting to learn that pitching at the top of the strike zone. Is he taking just a little bit off, a couple of ticks off at the top? At the bottom he will because that's when he's trying to get the ground ball. He's a pretty good ground ball pitcher because he wants to get a little more sink to it. Shin Su Chu didn't look like that was not going on. And it certainly was. Uh, the pitch that's down, you're going to see more 92s, and that's when he's trying to sink it a little bit more. And that's why you get so many ground balls. See that 94, 95, either when he's pitching inside or when he's going to the top of the zone. And all these little steps you see pitchers make along the way. He's taking another step forward. One one ball game. First pitch to Nelly at way outside. His last home run was last Thursday. Seventh inning. That was the one he hit off the foul pole down the right field line in Arlington. That was his last stroke of a fabulous day. He went four for four, scored four times, knocked in two runs. On one pitch. Strike two. And this is what he's done the entire game, staying away from him. Two and two. Two and two to Cruz. Easy play for Chu. Perez, good inning. He goes one, two, three. Each outfielder got a taste. One, one game. A 1 1 game, first of three with the Rangers. Must have it time here for Seattle. And make sure you join us this Saturday for King Felix Pop Collectible Day presented by Funco. The first 20,000 fans are going to receive the four inch tall figurine with 34 lucky fans taking home the special edition collectible of King Felix in all gold. For tickets, go to Mariners.com. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew with you. Aaron is an open up opening up the last homestand of the season. Finish things on the road, Oakland and Anaheim next week. Here's Joey Gallo, Robinson Chirinos, and Root Dead Odor against Mike Leak. Gallo so far an RBI ground up. That was in the second. Grounded out to short. And the second time out, he grounded out to Cano. 
is out short right field again for him. Blake tonight four strikeouts he hasn't walked anybody a run on six hits. They might get 85 pitches. Emilio Pagan getting loose in the Mariner pen. Mark Sepchensky, the left hander. It's a little double barreled action for the Mariners in the pen with nobody out here, top of the seventh. One, two to Gallo. Two and two. Gallo struck out 176 times. Starting today, Aaron Judge at 198, Chris Davis of the A's at 168, Chris Davis of the Orioles at 180, and Gallo at 176. Centurinos. 3 2 pitch here to Gallo. Strike three call. Fifth strikeout for Mike Leak. Excellent pitch. Fastball at the top of the zone. Gallo, a good low ball hitter. Century Link bringing you pitching matchups. And what's next here? We've got Andrew Kashner against Felix Hernandez, Cole Hamels against James Paxton. Looking for Felix. Really big tomorrow and ditto Paxton Felix three and two thirds last Thursday in Texas Mariners won that game 10 to four. He went three hits one run no walks and three K's and 54 pitches. Mariners in that game last week beat up on Cashman four and a third six hits five runs. Few times Mike has missed his location. It's a breaking ball. It's on the inside corner. Yeah, Hunter Mendez. One of three left handers in the pin for the Rangers. Time call. Twenty two. Farther outside. I miss with the cutter off the plate away. Again, his cut fastball tonight has been a good pitch for him. Able to get a lot of outs with the Rangers chasing that pitch off the plate. Comes right back and jams him with a two seamer. Well done. Two outs. <laughs> And here comes Scott Service. He's coming to get leak after six and two thirds. We'll do our left hander do up. And he's going to get Zepchensky. He wants Zepchensky to get Odor. Time now for a beacon plumbing call to the pen. And we'll be right back.
that's the first of three against the Texas Rangers. Take a look at our Columbia Bank difference of the game. Let's focus in on Mike Lee. Good work tonight. He has been really good for the Mariners, and that includes tonight. And he came into the game tonight 3 0. Already beaten the Rangers once, but he'll leave the ball game tied 1 to 1, but excellent command. And his line six and two thirds, six hits, one run. It was earned. Did not walk anybody. Pretty typical of him. Throws a lot of strikes. Five strikeouts, 93 pitches, 63 of those for strikes. And here's a big and plumbing call to the pen. The Braves veteran left-hander Mark Zipchinski. And for Mark, this will be his 60th appearance on the year. 20 holds for him. A 3.86 ERA, 30 and a 30 has 24 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 2.45. Good sinking fastball at 92 miles an hour and a slider. So Scott Service looking at the numbers. He's one for seven. Odor against Zepchinski and the fact that Odor crushed one center field and bounced over center field wall for a double. And it's getting late. So all those factors come into his decision here to make the change. The other part of it for Mike Leake, he was at 93 pitches, so he probably just had one more batter. It's got like this matchup a little bit better with the lefty. Yeah. If he's a righty, might not make the move. Right. I think he leaves it out there. And again, Odor, you can see the average at 209, but 29 home runs on the year. A little scary. 1 0 pitch. 1 1. Short right field to girl right side of the infield and this works out well as Zipchinski gets there in time to touch it up and they get Odor take it to the home seventh down a 1 1 game. For play today. There it is in a must win situation. Back four games, 12 to play beginning this evening. They're a 1 1 tie, bottom seven here against the Texas Rangers, the team they beat three out of four times last week, including this guy right here, Martin Perez, who's throwing a heck of a ball game here tonight. He has really pitched well tonight. You can see giving up just the one run. The Mariners with only four hits on the night. Must win situation for Texas, which starts four and a half back. Barnett the right hander and you under Mendez the left hander heating up so Kyle Seeger 0 for 2 a strikeout and a ground out the first Mariners got their run on a two out RBI double by Ben Gamble in the fifth that right after Joey Gallo an RBI ground out in the second put Texas in front.
Seeger, Valencia, and Zanino here in the seventh. Really trying to keep him from extending those arms. Two and one. Hit to Odor out short right field. One away. Take a look at some scores finals Yankees win 5 2 beat the twins back to back nights Blue Jays take out the Royals 5 2 and the Indians that's helpful 3 to 1 in the sixth. Now yeah, looks like we're going to get a pitching change 98 pitches for Perez and he's going to go get the right hander. Be Tony Barnett nice outing for both starters Leak and Perez 1 1 game. You know the MLB all-time home run record was broken and in honor of a lot of Twitter questions that people wanted to know how it broke down by all-time position for the Mariners the DH position Nelson Cruz has had a lot to do with that 943 shortstop the least and 94 as a pinch hitter and one as a pitcher. Think we know who the one is got to be Felix right got to be Felix a little bit surprised center field. Their fourth place, Junior, with half of those home runs. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> it is the truth. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Here's Tony Barnett, veteran right-hander. Spent some time in Japan. Fastball curve, cutter, split. Fastball at 93 miles an hour, 46 appearances. IERA at 464, 54 and a third. He has 55 strikeouts, 20 walks, a lot of walks for him. Opponents hitting 260 wins, giving up five home runs. Down to Alonzo going to pinch hit for Danny Valencia. The under one for one against Barnett. In tight. See Alonzo two for nine as a pinch hitter. One away here in the seventh. A 264 hitter on the season with 25 home runs and career best 63 RBIs. With the Mariners 255, three homers and 14 runs batted in. He's ahead here 2 0. Oh. Trying to give him the lead. Two balls, one strike. Two one pitch. Two two. Two 
Alonzo 0 for 3 in Sunday's loss at the Astros. Two two pitch. Laid off. Thanks Nino is on deck. Two fastballs that Alonzo has seen have been on the plate, but both of them down at the bottom of the knees. Three two pitch Kevin. And he walked it. Mariners to take it. Go ahead runs aboard one out from Mike Zanino who struck out looking and fly to left. Want to take advantage of these opportunities twins. Losing Kansas City. Losing tonight. We went on top of the Angels. Alonzo not a base stealing threat at first, and you know, first pitch. All one. And Doug Brokale, the pitching coach, making a trip out to the mound quickly. Didn't waste any time either. Matt Bush hard throwing right hander for the Rangers getting loose now in the pen. And uh, still up the lefty. And then Nick Vincent getting loose in the Mariner pen. Final two weeks in the regular season, some critical games. Odor, the second baseman, shading up the middle for Mike. Big hole right side of the infield. Mike, 23 home runs on the year. And since the All-Star break, hitting a 280 clip, the swing the bat well. Swing through 101. They tried to stay at the top of the strike zone against Mike the entire game. Stopped by Torino's. Two and one. You and I were talking before the game, and you're remembering back what '95 when you guys made the great run. Yep. Last what 16 games? Yeah, it was. It was about a month and a half with the amount of yeah 16 games behind, trying to catch up, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of intense baseball for us. There's a shot you're hoping for in the gap. That yep. works. Here's Alonzo. They'll get him to third. So Mike Zanino with a big base hit. That sets up nicely. Uh, he's been a hot hitter. We've talked about that. And he continues to swing the bat well. Just missed hitting a home run his last time up, and this time going the other way. This has been the adjustment. A pitch right in the middle of the plate. Inside out swing. Talking to Mike, not thinking mechanics anymore. He's thinking more right center field, and that's exactly where that line drive ends up. To the point that we were talking about it, and that is for the Mariners. We mentioned it. You see the other matchups we continue to show you as far as the wild card goes. And the Mariners win every day that they win, and one of those other teams loses. You're creating pressure, and that's what you want to try to do right now. Is there scoreboard watching as well? Okay. Here's Heredia. Gets away. Alonzo started and stopped. Zanino held as well. Good choice for both of them. If you're right, they are watching. They're aware of what's going on, and I think that you can apply some pressure to take another look at this breaking ball in the dirt. Pretty good block. It goes off the heel of the glove and the chest protector, but not far enough. Just a couple of steps from home plate. Go ahead, run at third. Hit by Zanino, the Mariners fifth tonight. 
The 1 0 oh, and that's throw over, so you know, barely off the bag. Outfielders are playing shallow. Big gap in left center field. Base hit the center field last time for Heredia. Oh boy, look out, look out, Gabby. Goodness gracious, got to get that bunt down. Out to five. I don't think that we've seen this all year. Take a look at it. Already is going to square around. It looks as if it's a safety squeeze. Yep. That's and Alonzo just a little bit too far down the line. He looked like he was trying to read it. The pitch was called the ball off the plate away. If it was suicide squeeze, he would try to bunt anything, but that pitch off the plate it looked as if yeah, he pulled back. He, he, like he was trying to read it, so yeah. it'll be interesting to hear what they'd say after the game. Man, oh man. Two outs. Count two and zero oh to Heredia. On a squeeze, the runner is going to take off, and Heredia would try to bunt anything. On a safety squeeze, the runner is just trying to read if he gets the bunt down. Three and zero. Oh. Two outs now. Zanino at first. Here we go. Three and zero. Oh. Taking all the way. And Gamble's on deck. Two for four with a home run against Barnett. Keeping a close eye on things. You guys got good seats and a binoculars. Three two pitch. Zanino takes off. Pitch swung on and fouled out of play. Mike on the move. Again, the outfielders are playing shallow. Big gap in left center field, but even right center, a line drive will get through. How shallow they are. Trying to come up big with two outs. 3 2 pitch. And Nino runs. Pitch swing on foul off again. A little bit late on the fastball. This will be the eighth pitch coming up. Two pitch towards the line, no play for shoe. Mike's getting a workout in. Yeah, he is. Happened here in the seventh. Three two from Barnett. Good battle. Tenth pitch coming up. Ready with a base hit. And a run scored back in the fifth. Two outs, he singled the center. Then Gamble followed with a double to right center to score 
Guillermo from first. He's trying to get Zanino around. 3 2. Smacks it. Right center field. Base hit. Inning continues. And a couple of hits for Heredia. He wins the battle. 10 pitches. Solid line drive into right field. Head right on it. That's pitch actually right on the outside corner. Ben Gamble up there again in a two out RBI opportunity. Came through back in the fifth on a 1 1 pitch. Tanner ready to go in the pen, but he's going to stay with Barnett, it looks like. Camel one for three against Barnett. Zanino, the go ahead run at second base. Both teams are run on six hits. And has the one RBI. Double in the right center field to drive in a radio. One for two made for Ben struck out leading off the third. They give him that same big gap right center field. Down the line. Foul. Boy, Mike was gonna score on that. <laughs> Tim Timmons, the third base umpire. Pitch was inside. I think it jams him a little bit. So an inside out swing, and that ball is spinning sideways like a top. Hits the cut of the grass. Otherwise, it would have been right over the base. That is a tough break. Hits the cut of the grass right uh. there and kicks it foul. There's the difference. Ben Tramit. Put the Mariners in front. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Oh. Off his foot. Seventh inning, Cleveland still leads the Angels 3 1. It's going to be a cut fastball. Ooh, cut. Just below Missed the it. knee on the shin. And that was solid. Ball rolled all the way back out to the mound. Zanino at second, Heredi at first, two outs, and a 1 2 pitch coming here to Ben Gamble in this 1 1 game in the seventh. Barnett set. Flips it left field. Mazzara is right there. And they get a runner thrown out at third, leaf two. We go to the eighth in a 1 1 game.
Ford Sports Desk hashtag where I root time presented by Alaska Airlines. This is kind of interesting. Kevin good enough to send this in. He is uh, with his brother today. It's his brother's birthday. They're here at the ballpark and that's Mike Zanino's doppelganger right. Take a look. I mean that's a dead ringer for Mike Zanino. In my opinion. Let's send it back upstairs to a couple of experts. David and Mike. Well Tom I got to tell you. <laughs> when when it was sent in I saw it on my Twitter feed and I had to get it to the truck and I said a lot of times people say hey, my brother looks like so and so he looks like Mike Zanino. Wow. Pitching change Mike Zipchinski was warming up Scott service countering the Carlos Gomez pinch hitting with Nick Vincent. BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast by CenturyLink, connecting you to the power of the digital world. By Jack in a Box, come try the new Smoky Jack Burger or a Chicken Sandwich, limited time only. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. When the wheels are spinning here, must have ball game for both the Mariners and the Texas Rangers. Tied at 1 1, eighth inning. Nick Vincent comes on. And he will face pinch hitter Carlos Gomez. And for Nick, hits fastball at 90 miles an hour, cutter at 88, and slider. Gomez, we did not see in action last week. Ankle issues for him. And a first pitch strike. And for Nick, 65 appearances this year, a 2.63 ERA. 48 strikeouts over 13 walks, points in 239 against him. Down the line, slicing, but it's going to stay fair. Gomez, extra bases. Hanniger throw to second. Nobody covering second. Uh, Lead off pinch hit double. Carlos Gomez. Gomez with his 21st double. And yeah, we'll take a look at the swing. Looks like cut fastball away from him. Ankle issues for Gomez. Well, Middlebrooks came on yep. pitch run. Middlebrooks will come on and play at third base. The ex Red Sox. Go ahead and run at second. Top of the order. Delano De Shields. Alonzo and Seeger both in on the grass. Segura trying to keep the runner close to second. Shields one for three. Bunt popped it up. Foul over the screen. Good pitch. Every time you get in these situations, and if you're not sure, throw a high fastball. Maybe they'll pop it up. Will M Middlebrooks pinch running. Trying to keep him there at second base. The Shields. 
with Seeger. Back at the cutoff. Cut out run. And he'll one. But and it's a good one. Safe. Good speed to Shields. Runners at the corners. It'll Brooks to third. Great speed and a perfect bunt. It's one of the best bunts we've seen this year. We'll take a look at it. Pitches up and away from him. He reaches out and hits it right off the end of the bat. That's going to deaden it. It just dies as it's going down the line. Perfect direction. Kyle doing everything he can. Barehanded play. And he beats it by a step and a half. Wasn't even close. It's a fastball, I think, because it hit off the end of the bat. It was really able. Really dug in there and, and just get, killed it. Yeah. yeah. Issues now. Runners at the corners. 1-1 one, one game. Nobody out. Top of the eighth. That base hit the eighth for Texas. Here's two. Bonzos is getting loose. Two to left hander. Beltre. Or excuse me, Andrews waiting on deck. Then Beltre. Two tonight, 0 for 3. That is foul. And for Beltre, you have Mazzara and Gallo, two left handed hitters, so Pablo's getting ready for them. To Shinsu Chu, eighth inning. Pressure mounting on both of these clubs. Trying to hang in there. The wild card chase, 1 1. Coach Tony Beasley. Vincent can really use a strikeout here. One two pitch. Hanniger oh! backing up, tagging his Middlebrooks. That's deep. Middlebrooks will score. And the throw comes into second. 2 1. Rangers sack fly. Shin Su Chu, a 73rd run batted in. It's his second sack fly of the season. Give you an idea how important this game is for both of these teams. As we check out the other scores earlier this evening, Yankees 5-2 over the Twins. Blue Jays stop the Royals. And the Indians lead in the bottom of the seventh down in Anaheim. Mariners start tonight four games back. Texas four and a half. Here how here's how it looks in the standings up to the moment. RBI by Chu. Scores Middlebrooks. Rangers up by a run. Here's Andrews. Runner goes. Throw to second. Safe. Cano saying, hey, take a look at that. Will Little, the umpire at second base. That was an excellent throw by Mike. Taking the throw. Let's see. Hand. It's close, but I think his hand was in there. Yep. One of the back corner of the base, so a little bit longer tag. Yeah, hands in there. Get the old oven mid on. Stolen base for DeShields is 29th. One here to Andrews. Speedy runner at second. Oh, and two. Andrews. Oh, for seven against Nick. They're trying to put him away here. Oh, and two. Just past the diving Seeger. 
Coming around is the shield to throw offline. Andrus on the throw takes second. RBI Elvis Andrus is 86. Andrews ends up shattering his bat. He hit it right towards the end of the bat. Finds a hole on the left side. That was the cut fastball. Just splits the bat right down the middle. Barrel flying out towards Kyle out of his reach. By Nick Handy mode two. Beltre. Two hits tonight, two for three. Cut. Rangers are now two for six with runners in scoring position. One out, man. There's Andrews running to third. They got him jammed up. Oh, no. Vincent. Nobody at third. So he went out of the line. Second base umpire, Will Little, said he ran out of baseline. They get him. That got pretty hairy. And the ball dropped, and the next thing you know, you had Nick covering a third, and there was nobody behind him. And he's just guessing out there. Called being out of the baseline, you can see the umpire making the call. <laughs> Big swing and miss by Beltre. They're scoring at home, one five four one six. On put out. Beltre fouls one back. Down two. Two outs and an 0-2 pitch to Beltre. So you're gonna miss. Got it. Two runs put on the board by the Rangers. They do it with one, two, three hits. No errors, nobody left. 3-1 Texas. of three important contest here at Safeco Field. King Felix, he returns to the mound tomorrow. Take on these Rangers at 710. Make sure you cheer him on for the King's Court where you can score a ticket, a t-shirt, and a King card for only 20 bucks. Pick up your $20 King's Court tickets. Go to Mariners.com slash Felix. That is a great deal. See Felix come out. New third baseman. 
Will Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks, who came on as a pinch runner, stays at third. Plays at third. That's his natural position. Came up with the Red Sox. And taking over is Matt Bush. 52 appearances on the year. 3-5-1 ERA. 55 strikeouts and 48 and two-thirds. Opponents hitting 250. He's going to have six home runs this year. One of the better fastballs you're going to see is average fastball this year at 98 miles an hour. Slider curve change to go with it. Got some good fastball hitters coming up top of the order for the Mariners. Segura, Hanniger, and Cano. Gene tonight. 0 for 3, two ground outs, a shortstop. Fly to right. in there for strike. Segura looking for his first hit. Against Matt Bush. 17,251 on hand here. Bouncing ball goes right to middle books. One out. Bring up Mitch Hanniger. First inning base hit since then a ground out. And he sent one to the track in deep left center field that was run down by Mazzaro. We have Cano coming out on deck. Jake Diekman, hard throwing left hander, getting loose in the pen for the Rangers. Also has a mid 90s fastball. Uh, back. Haniger is one for three against Matt Bush. They're starting into three game losing streak back from that three and four road trip. Did well against these Rangers and Texas lost the first game won the next three. That did him. It's an ugly sound. He's got a base runner and bring a tying run to the plate Robbie Cano. Coming out, he's going to make a change. He wants Dickman to face Robinson Cano. Cano, two for 12 with a homer against Dickman. See what materializes when we come back.
against Jake Diekman. Mariners down three to one. The runner aboard here in the eighth. Just seven appearances for him this year. Seven and a third, eight strikeouts, five walks, and get wild. Good fastball. He'll be in the mid 90s, 94 to 96 with a slider. Most of the year on the DL. Three surgeries to replace his colon, so. Nice job by Jake Diekman to battle his way back to the major leagues after three surgeries. Game on the line right here. Robbie Cano, 299 career home runs. And one of those home runs coming against Diekman. One of the two hits he has in 12 at bats. Robbie represents the tying run. He's one for three tonight. Diekman in a big spot last year gave up a home run to Day Home League. April of last year. Salvage a game for the Mariners in a series that did not start well against these Rangers. Pazos getting loose again, left hand before the Mariners along with Diaz. Hanniger, the runner at first, one out. Robbie heading to Camp Tuno. Pitch. Two and one. Knowing what Dickman's got and the count right here, you probably can know what's he look in particular. What do you think he's looking for zone wise, pitch wise? Well, I, I think right now he's just going to look for something in the middle of the plate. Too well, a little bit surprised that he was taking all the way. Ended up getting a fastball again for Dickman. His fastball 94 95, and a set up away from him. With the slider. So 2 0, he came back with the fastball, see if we give him the fastball 3 and 1. Nelson Cruz, he looms on deck. Mariners have never led, they tied it at 1 1. Trail 3 1, and Robbie with a 3 1 count. Runner at first, one out. The other way, Mazar right there. Two outs. Came back with the fastball again, but that time right on the inside corner, just above the belt. Cruz two for nine against Dickman. Nelly tonight strikeout sent one to the track and center and fly it out to right. Well, Rangers they had a right hander ready to go in the pen but they're going to stay with the lefty Deepman. But for sure the righty was coming. Play was getting loose was to face yeah. Nelson. Right, all right. I'm looking at a faster waiting him to come out. They didn't come out. Yeah. Hopefully Nelson can take advantage of it. Think of a stop there by Chirinos. Now he's ahead here 2-0. Seager waiting on deck. Cruz, the RBI leader in the American League with 110. Tied for eighth. Runners in scoring position, batting average. Entering tonight with 343. Tied with Baltimore Stray Man seating. Outfield deep. Reno to Nelson Cruz, the tying run at the plate, two outs here in the eighth. And yes, he can swing <laughs> if he wants to. Yeah, buddy. 
Jeff Pastor. So it's 33 home runs this year. Three oh pitch. Not close. So moving to second Hanniger. Cruz with a free pass brings up Kyle Seeger. He's two for nine with a homer against Dickman. Got a pinch runner. Jacob Hanneman. Pinch run for Nelly. Representing representing the tying run. Kyle with 25 home runs on the year. I mentioned it earlier in the game when Perez was on the mound, but left on left, nobody's hit more home runs against left-handed pitching as a left-handed hitter than Kyle Seeger since 2012. 52 home runs against left-handers. Outfield deep for him. Odor and short almost medium right field first pitch breaking ball for strike. Opportunities here for the Mariners with two out two on. Kyle representing the go ahead run 0 for 3 tonight. Good wheels out there at Hanniger and Hanneman. Cal in an 0-2 hole. Pitch from Dickman. Right, three called. Strands two. Ninth inning coming up. 3 1 Texas. Ninth, Mariners have left seven men on base tonight. Texas has left five as we take a look at CenturyLink, bringing you what's next, the pitching matchups. For the next two nights, Andrew Kashner against Felix. 70 to 80 pitches for him. Same goes for Paxton the following night against Cole Hamels. Boy, there was an opportunity there for the Mariners in the eighth, but Kyle took a called third strike. That ends the threat, brings on James Pazos. For Pazos, 55 appearances, a 3.63 ERA, 63 strikeouts and 52 innings, good number for him. Oh, it's hitting 237 fastball, mid to upper 90s with a slider. Yeah, you go back, you look at the last two innings oh. for the Mariners, some chances there for him. Now work out. And the runner nailed it third on a bun attempt that went awry. 
So two runners left on in the seventh, two runners left on in the eighth, total of seven for the evening. There's Nomar Mazzara, followed by Joey Gallo and Robinson Chirinos here in the top of the ninth. Bazos for the first pitch strike. Check that he was a double in the uh, second inning, and then Joey Gallo followed with the RBI ground out with Texas in front. One one pitch. There he go. Did not. This is Tim Timmons. Two and one. Gallo waiting on deck. 38 home runs on the year. Third in the American League. Cleveland still leads at LA. 3 1 bottom of the eighth. Oh. It's the Angels. That pitch on corners is James Hoyt. Fastball at 96. Playing Garden getting loose in the pen for the Mariners. Two two pitch. Pulled the string beautifully. So one away. And right, that'll bring up Big Joey Gallo. 0 for 3 with an RBI. Struck out looking last time up. First and play third. It is. He's all about the big home runs. One on one. Mariners in the bottom of the ninth. Alonzo, Zanino, and Heredia. Center field, here comes Heredia. He'll be a base hit. Tenth hit for Texas. So one out for Robinson Chirino, so for three. And service going to stay with the left hander Pazos. You have Odor, left handed hitter after that. And Ryan Garten, the right hander, getting loose in the pen. Strike one. Harris could use the double play, get out of this thing. Run in the second, two in the eighth for Texas. Mariners got their run in the fifth inning. Ben Gamble, two out RBI double. They're ready yet. Call it off, Gamble. Two outs. <laughs> two outs, and it brings up Ruth Neto Door. Interesting matchup. Odor loves to hit the fastball, and he can hit a good fastball. Mazo's fastball so far, he's topped out at 96 miles an hour, but he has a good slider. Definitely going to try to keep the ball away from him. We've seen Odor in these situations way too much. More than ever at this time of game, he is going for the downs. We talked about it earlier coming into the game hitting 208 with 29 home runs. So, yes, he has power. There's also a lot of holes in that swing. Don't make any mistakes. <laughs> 2 
Two outs here in the top of the ninth. Angels have put a run on the board. It's 3 2 Cleveland, bottom eight. Up the middle, Segura, slow roller. Gets rid of it, got him. Here we go. Last stops for the Mariners, Alonzo, Zanino, and Heredia. And they got to get it going here. Andrew Alonzo will lead it off. Then Mike Zanino. And Guillermo Heredia. 3 1 Texas. Coming up on Mariners post game presented by Alaska Airlines will recap the pitching performances from both starters Mike Leak and Martin Perez and head inside the clubhouse for your action as the final homestand of the season kicks off plus we'll take a look at how the other wild card contenders did tonight and we'll get you set for Felix's second start since coming off the DL all of that and more on Mariners post game presented by Alaska Airlines upstairs to Dave and Mike and Tom thank you very much. Crunch time. Down to the last three outs. Alex Claudio, left-hander, takes over for Texas. Not your typical closer. His fastball, 87 miles an hour. Fastball, slider, changeup again. It's fastball on average, 87. But he is the closer for the Rangers. 65 appearances on the year. 2.69 ERA and 77 innings, just 52 strikeouts. He's only walked 15 batters. Carlos Ruiz, right hander, going to pinch hit for Yonder Alonso. First pitch strike. Outside from Claudio. Ruiz one for two against Claudio. Ryan Rule, I'll make that uh, Ryan Rule takes over and left. There's a strike. There's the changeup at 72. Deception, side armor, changing speeds, and throws a lot of strikes. Involved to the third base in Middlebrooks. Throws him out. One out. Mike Z with a base hit. Right field, seventh inning. Mariners in that inning and runners at first and second, two outs. Gamble ended it flying out to left. And they had runners at first and second in the eighth. Two outs. Kyle Seager took a call, third strike in that threat. On one here to Mike. And you also go back to the seventh inning, and Yonder Alonso getting picked off at third. Like this a safety squeeze. He came down the line, and the catcher, Trinos, threw down to Robinson to get him.
Molina one for two against Claudio. One one pitch. Check swing. That will get fouled. Stay fair. That'd have been a base hit for Mike. Check swing on a changeup. 73 miles an hour. Battle now. One and two count. The body from the left hand side gives you more funky motion than Claudio. Wow, well, with the exception of Oliver Perez, who used to be here. <laughs> Good point. Good. I think he'd do a 360 on the mound. He gives you so much motion. One two pitch. Off the fist. Gallo <laughs> plays big boy on Odor. <laughs> Brother. Two outs. And the reach. Now for the last out here in the ninth. Already 0 for 6 against Claudio. Two hits to center field tonight, a run scored. Cleveland 3 2, top of the ninth at Anaheim. Ball one. One oh two Guillermo. Good well, change up. He can throw some Bugs Bunny up there, can he? He really can. Fastball at 87, change up 72 73 tonight. One one pitch. Slider. Did not go, says Jeff Kellogg. Two balls, one strike. Two one pitch. Two and two. Mariners down to their final strike. Two two from Claudio. Bounce fair. Gallo to the bag. Game over. Texas wins. Three to one in the final. Fourth consecutive loss for the Mariners, and that is a bad loss. Yeah, it looked like they had a great opportunity tonight. The teams that they were concerned about needed some help with the lose. Looks like